Hamden, are you awake yet? I'm awake. Right now I'm having something to eat. Today you need to go to the hospital for your checkup, right? How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling a little bit under the weather, but I can make it to the hospital. I see. Well, that's good to hear at least. It's looking like later today there's going to be some rain showers. I think it's best that you bring an umbrella with you when you go. Come on now, Paige. You don't need to keep looking over me like I'm some kid. I can take a look at the weather myself and judge what I need to bring. I'm sure you can. I was just making sure you didn't forget us all. Sorry if that upset you any. Well, whatever. It's my fault for ending up this way. Camden, I've told you this plenty of times now. None of that is your fault. No matter how one looks at it, this is my fault. I'm no longer able to work for us anymore, and I have to rely on you to take care of me all the time. Are you sure you don't feel like leaving me after all of this? I mean, your own husband can't really do anything himself anymore, and I feel like a failure to you. I would never think something like that of you, of us. I am so happy to be married to you, and all I need in return is for you to be around me. And when it comes to becoming sick, everyone has a chance of it. So don't go blaming yourself for something you couldn't control. But mentally and physically, I'm nothing now. And I can't even work a simple job. I wish I ended up with something much more understood, like cancer or something. Then, it would have been a lot easier for me to deal with. And we wouldn't have to go through all this crap anymore. Please, do not say things like that about yourself. None of this has caused me any stress, alright? Are you sure? I'm not only unable to work, but I can barely get any of the chores done while I'm sitting at home. And I can't even bother getting myself to leave the house anymore. You're telling me that being married to a man like myself is totally okay with you and causes you no problems? That's what I'm saying. I love you, and that's all that matters to me. Had I not been okay with any of this, then I would have left you a long time ago, right? Well... I myself have had days where I'd get sick out of nowhere and be useless for long stretches of time. If our roles were reversed right now, and I was the one really sick, and you were the one still working, would you find me to be a problem for you? I would never think of you as a problem, then. Right? Right now, the only thing you should be worried about is taking your time to recover and relax. So you don't have to keep worrying about my feelings either, and you can just think about yourself. If you feel that being with me right now isn't good enough for you, then we can always look into a different approach to treating you. But right now, you're fine living here with me still, right? And your treatments are fine? Well, it's not like I have anything wrong with what's been going on. I just feel like you're wasting all your time with someone like me. I feel like I'm the one wasting your time by being around you. And I feel sorry for that. I'm just doing what I want to do, okay? I think you really need to stop caring about me and what I do with my time and focus only on yourself. Now, for the time being, I will stay with you and make sure you're doing okay. Right now, we're both still making life work together and you're still able to go in for checkups and treatments. I find that to be wonderful. Are you really okay with me and the way I am? It's been a whole year now, and I still haven't been able to go to work. And that's just a year. <laughs> you need to stop worrying about time, okay? Ah, I think you should start getting yourself ready to go to the hospital. What do you think? Go and take a shower before you go. Sure. I think I'll be home around 7 p.m. tonight, all right? Sounds good. Good luck with the rest of your day at work. Thank you. And you take care of yourself on the way to your checkup. Camden, I'm sorry I couldn't take your call just then. I'm with a customer of mine right now. What's going on that you need to talk about? Did something happen to you? My father passed away. What? Your dad? He... He passed away? Yes. His heart apparently stopped. 
My family just called me a little bit ago about it. I see. All right, then. I will go and talk to the company about this and come right home to get you. Then the both of us can go to your family's house, all right? Not possible. We have no reason to go back to them, right? And the last person that ever got to see my dad was you, not me. And that was just because you were in the hospital yourself getting treatment, right? It's not your fault that you couldn't go with me to see him. But right now, I'm unemployed. And I don't do anything with myself. With the way things are for me now, there's no point in going back to see everyone, right? This is not about there being a point to you being there. You would like to go and see your dad one last time before they bury him, right? Well, of course I want to go and see him. It's all right, Camden. I will be right there next to you when we go. And since your dad was living all by himself before he passed, we have to be there to help with the funeral, right? So would you please start getting yourself ready to go back to see everyone? There will probably be a lot of paperwork that we'll need to fill out and other things to prepare as well for the funeral. So let's expect to be there for a week. If I go with you, I won't be a problem for everyone, will I? I have not been a good son for either of my parents, nor the rest of the family. And that's why this is your last chance to make up for all of that, by being next to your dad as he's laid to rest. Recently, you've started going outside a lot more often, so I think you'll be fine leaving your home for a week. And if you feel like you're becoming stressed or exhausted while over there, you're allowed to take a break. Just have a little confidence in yourself and let's go. I'm right here with you, right? All right. I'm so sorry though, Paige. I always feel like I'm causing problems for everyone. You are not causing me or anyone else any problems right now. Now, I have a few things to do really quick and then I'll be on my way home. Okay. But I have no idea where any of our funeral clothing is here. When I get home from here, I'll get it for us. Just start packing up your clothing that you want to wear casually and some toiletries. Okay. I'll be waiting for you once I have my things together. Camden, this weekend I think I'll be able to go to your dad's house as well. I have half a day of work on Friday, so if you want, we can leave early then. You don't have to come with me. There's no need for you to go to his house with me anymore. Why not? There's still a lot of paperwork that needs to be done there, so you don't want to do all of that yourself, right? You really don't have to worry about me, because I'm already looking forward to heading over there again. It's not about me being worried about you. I want for us to split up. Huh? What are you talking about right now, Cameron? I'm gonna be leaving the house. Hold on a second, okay? Have you not been taking all your medications lately? If you stop suddenly, then this might be some of the side effects from that. Or perhaps this is due to the shock from your dad passing away? That's not it. None of that. All right? Huh. I am being serious right now when I say I want us to go our separate ways. Camden, what has gotten into you all of a sudden? Come on now, Paige. You're such a doofus. Did you really believe that when I told you I was suffering from depression? I was being serious? You actually went and believed all that crap? Huh. I'm so happy that you were an easy woman to deceive. You were lying to me? But you have been taking medications for it this whole time, and you showed me your results from when you went to see the psychiatrist. <laughs> I've just been taking vitamins and crap. They weren't pills of any sort. And as for those results, I just went online and found someone else and copied those with my name placed over top. <laughs> I've been fine this whole time. So you've really been lying to me about being depressed? Yep. I was just starting to hate working, was all. We had been working together for a while. But you were making enough money to support the both of us, right? That's why I assumed it would be totally fine for me to just stop working. Is that... so? But the fact that you're not sick is great. I just fooled you so badly. And you're not even mad at me? Well, I was really worried about you that whole time. Well... 
Your stupidity is really what makes you such a nice person. Or, perhaps it's that your kindness really makes you such an idiot. Because of you allowing me to not work for a whole year and live off your income, I feel refreshed and I'm really thankful for that. But, I still want us to get this divorce. Why do you want to get a divorce so badly? Because I don't really have any feelings for you anymore, Paige. You were always working all the time, never home to be with me. So, that started to make me less interested in you. And, soon, I no longer felt like I loved you at all. I'm going to be getting my dad's inheritance here really soon as well. So there is no use in me having you around anymore. Hence, me wanting this divorce now. Does this all mean that the only reason you actually kept me around for a year was because of the money I make? Well, towards the end, that's pretty much right. And right now, I happen to have someone else I really like. I see. So it's a divorce then. I'm totally fine with that, but afterwards don't bother looking for me. Huh? I have no reason to come looking for you anymore. <laughs> it was freaking stupid of you to actually fall for someone faking being sick right in front of your eyes. And the fact that you constantly acted like my mom was annoying. And yeah, we're able to live well together. But we never bought anything new or fun. Now that I'll be getting all of my dad's money, I can use it any way I'd like to. And that's hundreds of times better than relying on you. <laughs> I really was worried about you that whole time, Camden. I know that. And that's why life for me was so easy. But you better be careful from now on, alright? You are way too easy to trick. And literally anyone can take advantage of you. I wasn't tricked into anything this time, I just happened to really trust my husband and love him. And as you can see now, trusting me that easily led you to being tricked, right? So don't try and label it all as something else. You honestly should have left me a lot sooner. I was always planning on throwing you away someday, and I kind of hoped that you'd catch on to that and leave me first. So that's what all of that talk meant. When you'd say I'd be better off without you and going to be on my own again? I was thinking that by having you be the one to leave me first, then I could use that situation to my advantage. But, now that I'm getting my dad's money, I no longer need to wait for that day to come. Thank you for all your effort. I hope that you can find a new life for yourself as well. I'm going to start living my life the way I want to from now on. Why did you ever end up marrying me in the first place? Back when you and I were going out with one another, I really liked you. But, as well as we all know, people's feelings can be changed rather easily. And, in your case, you've gotten older and are a little too old for me. In terms of looks, at least. I think when all this is over, you should go have a look in the mirror, and you'll understand what I mean by that. You have really turned into a grandma. They weren't kidding when they said once a woman turns 30, their body goes right to being like a 60-year-old's. Page, Long time no see. Are you doing alright for yourself? What do you want from me right now? I made sure to get all of your things moved to your new address for you, so there's nothing left in my house. I'm sorry. Huh? Well, listen. Ever since that day we've divorced, I've had a lot of time to think. You had taken such good care of me for so long. And... I said such terrible things to you in the end. I've been wondering why I ever said those things to you. Especially when you had always been thinking and caring for me. I was a complete idiot for that. I feel so sorry for making the two of us get a divorce in such a horrible way. Is that so? But if you're here to apologize to me now for all of that, you're not going to get my forgiveness. That's what I thought. But... I finally realized something. The most happy I've ever felt in my life was back when you and I were together and in love. I'm sure it was so much fun for you to sit around at home all day while I've worked my butt off while also cheating on me with another woman. I'm sure that was the most happy time in your life. You didn't have to worry about a thing and got to do everything you wanted. That's not what I mean. That's not at all what I was talking about. I'm talking about before that, 
when you and I were both working jobs. I know we were both busy a lot of the time, but it was also fun then, right? Is that right? To me, all of that time spent being married to you meant nothing in the end, therefore it wasn't fun for me. I'm not trying to say my life was ruined by it, but the time I spent married to you was a waste in my eyes. Please don't say things like that. I've really thought about a lot in regards to us since the divorce. Do you think you can let me see you again? And allow me to apologize in person? I told you that once we got divorced, for you to never come looking for me again, right? But if we let things be the way they are now, I'm going to feel really sorry. Since the divorce, I haven't been able to get anywhere. Then that seems to be your problem, Camden. If you don't move on and start a new life, you are going to be stuck feeling sad and depressed forever. You being in a rut right now has nothing to do with me. Paige, please? I think that one more time is all I need. So, please let me see you again. Do you think that by seeing me again, you can get down on your hands and knees begging for my forgiveness and that will be enough to get me to forgive you? I remember that inside you, you think of me as someone who is easy to deceive. I'm someone that can be easily taken advantage of. You feel that if you can get me to forgive you, there's a chance we will be able to live together again. That's not what I think right now. Yeah, you sure do think that right now. I know very well that the only reason you've contacted me right now is because you're having trouble with money. Your father was in a lot of debt, right? He borrowed more money than he could ever pay off. Um... Why? You've known about this the whole time? The last time I was able to meet with your dad before he passed, I heard all about it. That's why I told him to leave me out of his will. Huh? Why did you never tell me about all of his debt? Because you never asked me. I'm not playing around right now. I've already gone and used up all the money he had left me with. And soon after I was told he has debts that I'm going to have to repay now? Had you just talked with the lawyer about it a bit more, I'm sure you would have understood what you were getting into. But before you and I could go and talk to the lawyer together, you asked me to divorce you. But the fact that you never said anything about his debt is messed up. I'm not going to listen to you saying that about me. <laughs> You were the one that lied to me for a whole year about your mental illness. What the hell are you trying to go on about now? <laughs> At the time, I didn't want to work anymore, so I had no other choice. And what's the problem with that? I was just like a housewife to you, right? Or are you trying to say there was no value to me being your housewife? You were the one that told me as long as I was around you, you were happy. Was that a lie or something? Please, do not change the topic on me. Back then, things were a lot different than the way things are now. Right? Back then, you were lying to me about your illness. And then the moment some money of your own landed in the palm of your hand, you threw me aside and ran off. And not only that, but you also made sure to dig into me a little before going. Made me look like an idiot. Is there any reason for me to want a man like that back in my life now? It was like you weren't even my husband back then. But, I'm telling you, I got played by my dad. He never said anything to me about his debt. I know. It really does suck that not only are you a liar, but so is your dad for never telling you the truth about his finances. But when your dad was talking to me, he always wondered why you could never come say hi to him. And I tried to explain to him something that turned out to be a lie in the end. I'm sure if you actually left the house and saw your dad, he would have told you about his debt and asked if you wanted to be left out of the will as well. But I never expected this would happen after never going back to him. What the hell was my dad thinking? But, in a way, there's something funny about the money your dad had to borrow. The only reason there's so much of it that needs to be paid off is because you were always asking your dad to give you some of his money. So, in a way, this is your own debt that you're having to pay back to your dad. So make sure you pay it all off soon. I... I'm really in a bad situation right now. If things don't change for the better, I'm gonna lose my home. I'll have nowhere left to sleep at night. Didn't you have a girlfriend that was younger than me? 
What happened to her? Why can't you ask her for help? The moment she found out about the debt I have now, she stopped talking to me. And you were the one telling me I was easy to trick. She fooled you just as easily as you fooled me. <laughs> and she really loved using a lot of my money. But, because of that, I was able to realize something. The person that understands me the most, and that would never trick me, is you, Paige. It's not always about having a woman that's young, is it? It's also about one's heart. And, with how kind you've been to me, you're the only person for me. Is that the conclusion you've come to? Well, I'm sorry, but there is no chance you're coming back to me. In my case, I'm really happy now that you ended up kicking me out of your life like that with a divorce. Really, right now, I don't have any worries and have been able to live my life the way I want to. Paige, I'm really sorry. Back then, there was something wrong with me. I should have stayed with someone like you, who was willing to do everything to support me. I made a big mistake then. I was an idiot. And I've understood that for a long time now. You don't have to explain yourself to me anymore, alright? Now, would you please never send me such stupid texts ever again? I'm sure that even an idiot like you understands what I want, right? Please, Paige. Can you please find a way to not throw me away like this? From here on, I want to take things between us seriously. I'll even start looking for a job. So, please, find a way to give me one more chance to spend my life with you. Ugh. After everything I've had to deal with, it is scary to hear you say things like that to me. I do not love you anymore, Camden. I can use my money on myself now and have no more stress. There is no reason for me to give up my freedoms to be with someone like you again. I think you should just forget about me and learn how to support yourself instead. Because with the way you are now, there is not going to be one woman that wants to spend her life with you. After that, in order to pay off the debt Cameron had to the banks from his father, the banks went and took the house he was living in and said that was enough. But because of that, he no longer had a place to live anymore. For a little while, Camden then went and stayed at a 24-7 fast food joint and would constantly make new numbers trying to get in contact with me so that he could ask for my help. But by the time I realized those numbers were all his, he was no longer sending anything and I believe he gave up. I really have days still where I'll sit here wondering what the hell was the point of being married to a man like him in the past. But had his dad not passed away and all that, then I might still be married to him believing his lies to this day. I'm sure it's not right for me to say I'm thankful that his dad passed away, but that made for a great starting point so that I'd learn of my ex's lies and we could move away from one another for good. I like to think that his dad always knew his son was tricking me and that he died in order to help me see that. I only hope that now, after all the help he gave me, my ex's dad is living the time of his life up there in heaven. It's been three years now since all of that happened and I've started to date someone new. At first I was worried he might be just like Camden and would try and deceive me, but soon I learned that he was completely different and had a heart of his own. We haven't begun talking about getting married or anything yet, but I might give trusting someone with my life a second chance if things continue well. Right now I've really been so happy with the life I've been given that I don't even feel any hate for my ex anymore. And in order to keep things like that for the rest of my life, I'm going to continue working on becoming stronger myself and communicating with my current boyfriend about everything and anything we need to be talking about. Luckily, he is very understanding of that himself, so I can see a marriage between us not being too far off in the future. Thank you for watching and listening. We hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Also, feel free to leave a comment about what you thought of the story. We look forward to seeing you at the next story.